Call from the Kingdom, and uh, welcome back to my Dragon Age headcanon series, where we talk about some of the different choices I've made throughout the series, and why. Today we're talking about Anders. This is a very divisive topic. Let me start by saying you don't have to agree with me. I'm going to make my case and explain my point of view. All I ask from you guys is that you try to stay open-minded, and at the very least, please be respectful. We're all fans of Dragon Age, and we can disagree without putting each other down. Now, let me start by saying that I do think we should all agree that what Anders did was wrong. Murdering hundreds of innocent people is wrong. The people in and around the Chantry had nothing to do with the treatment of mages. You could say they made no attempt to stand up to the injustice, but let's be real. There was nothing they could have done anyway. The Templar's power in Kirkwall was all but absolute. Specifically, Grand Cleric Elthina probably could have done more than she did, but it would never have been enough. She kept the peace for as long as she could, and she restrained the Templars as much as she could. I will say I admire Elthina. I think she could have and should have done more, but I admire her faith. But truly, the only ones with enough power to make a real change were the Seekers and the Divine who did investigate the harsh treatment of mages. However, blood mages and abominations were a big problem in Kirkwall for years. Largely, not entirely, but largely because of the Templar's harsh treatment. More could have and should have been done. I think the circle was handled poorly all around. But none of this justifies Anders murdering all those people who couldn't have done anything if they tried. So when it comes to deciding what to do with Anders... Okay, my first time through, I think I kind of shut down during this scene. As in, I couldn't fully grasp what he did. Honestly, I was kind of eager to get to the end anyway, so that didn't help things. I also hadn't played Awakening, so that probably played a huge role in things. But I asked our companions, and I agreed with Meryl. He should come with us. Do what he can to put things right. I firmly believe that all life is precious, and I believe everyone deserves a chance at atonement, at redemption, to do something good with their life. I have learned firsthand that it's not always black and white. Sometimes mercy is required. And I wish there was a way to spare Loghain without letting him join the Wardens, but I, I can't trust him and he would have been executed without the right of conscription. And Anders... I'll be honest, in my first playthrough, I didn't have Sebastian or even Fenris. When I finally did, and Sebastian insisted I execute Anders, that was the first time I did. And I was upset that Anders didn't get the opportunity to redeem himself. But I later thought about it. I, I thought about it a lot. And I came to realize... This is not the spirit of justice from Memoranthine. It is a demon of vengeance. Likewise, this is no longer our friend Anders. This is an abomination, albeit a functioning one. By the end, there is nothing left of the friends we once knew. And I want to make something clear. This was justice's greatest fear. In Awakening, he talks about the possibility of becoming a demon, and he talks about it like it is the worst possible thing that could happen to him. The anger inside Anders twisted him into a demon of vengeance, and in turn warped Anders' mind. And it only got worse from there. If the real Justice or Anders had seen what this abomination had done, they would have killed him without a second thought. This is what they would have wanted. This is mercy. Justice survives and is released back to the Fade, but he can't do any more harm. At least until he finds a way out, but that's true of all demons. Although Hawk never knew the original Anders or Justice, the fact of the matter is that this is an abomination that just killed hundreds and doomed millions. There is no way to restrain him. At least, short of tranquility, which I could never bring myself to do, even if it was an option. Even Sebastian, 
saw that there was good in Anders. But by the end, he was gone. The truth is, Anders' story is a tragedy. It's a good story, but it's a sad one. And it only ends with him receiving mercy. Justice and Anders are gone. This thing that destroys the Chantry is something else completely. It's not about choosing life or death. It's about mercy. If you let him live, I think it's feelings getting in the way of what not only is the humane thing to do, but also denying the real justice and Anders of what they would want. The progression of this abomination from damaged but functioning to fully mad is, I think, very well done. It doesn't matter if he was your friend, your lover, or your rival. What matters is that Anders is gone. His actions were not justified by any stretch. It's just a question of whether or not he can still be saved. And I believe the answer is unequivocally no. Requiescat in pace. In Uthanera. Naravas.